eyes. I think... I think I can see Theresa May over there. She's running through the fields of wheat. because we're going on a day trip out of the capital and we're taking ourselves to Stare Orehi, Old Orehi um, where there is a monastery that we want to go see it's a, a UNESCO site a couple of hours out from the capital you get your tickets just outside of the main central station there's a little casa over there that you pay for and you get your bus taking you to Trebujeni uh, which is the village next to the old monastery. And then somewhere over here is our little Marshot Kavani bus. There we go, one right ahead. That white one. She's now to Trebujeni. We've got about 20 minutes before we head off. Grab our seats. Yeah, we can grab our seats and we leave at 8.35 pronto. <laughs> the bus now it's taken us not much over an hour to get here we could see the monastery from the oh because it turns back round oh yeah so we are we're in Botticelli yeah yeah okay so it takes not very long to get here um, he drops you off at the bottom of the citadel and up we go we read that um, it would take maybe up to two hours obviously traffic's not been very bad and I think we left early enough as well. So now we're going up to see the monastery. church so people do come here for prayers and services twice a day and there are a couple of monks who live here as well and it's um, a holy site and I think it's been used for pilgrimages for quite a long time as well and then underneath there are some caves and some tunnels and the caves and tunnels are especially famous because apparently when this area was under Tartar Mongol rule there was um, they were called the Golden Horde, and the leader of the Golden Horde, when it came up to battle, he'd hide all his gold down there so it wouldn't get taken away. And um, also, during Soviet times, when pilgrims came here, they would go down into the caves to hide, because under Soviet rule, and under, yeah, under Soviet rule, they weren't allowed to practice their religion openly. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back down and we're going to try, we've seen a little trail map, we're going to try and see if we can get to the caves that are somewhere down here. We asked an old guy who was selling some icons and stuff about where the entrance to the cave is. It turns out it's just underneath the bell tower. We just didn't realise. So, here's the entrance. I wonder if I need to cover my head. So here we go, the caves. Oh, smell the incense. Yes, this is where people used to come and hide. 
Through the caves, which are now behind me, you can come out here. Look at this. So the caves are built right into this rock face. <laughs> when we were in there, they've got lots of offerings with um, candles inside the bread. And um, yeah, they've been put in here. And a lady came up to me, handed me the bread, and I've seen other people kiss the bread before they put the candles somewhere. So I did that, and then I tried to put the bread back. She was like, no, 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 it's for you. So, <laughs> so now we have some round bread for snacking on. The cave, the bell tower, and the church are all up there. And we're gonna make our way down here. I think it leads us into Butuchani village. We'll have a look, a look, a little look around. And then we'll carry on on the walking path and go to Trebujani village. There's a little Second World War memorial here. People's names from the village. And then when we turn around, it's a cool little well. First of all, how cute are the sun and the moon? Second of all, here's the well. They don't seem to use it now. But I'm guessing this is where the locals used to come and get their water. Come across this place where Danny's going inside now. We've been looking from the outside and there's these pictures. And it's an opera theatre in this little village. There's a little quote underneath saying, This is the most beautiful theatre that I've ever seen by Friedrich Pfeiffer, who's a conductor in Vienna. But this lady who's doing the, um, the plants, she said we can come in and have a look. So here we go. This is the opera theater. I did ask her how old it is. Um, she said, not old. And then I tried to get an answer out of her about how old. And I said, 10 years, 15 years. And she's like, meh. So I don't know. <laughs> But it is, I mean, what an amazing setting for a theatre. I wonder how often they put shows on. And then this is the stage. It's a big stage. Wow. Oh. Trees with these things um, hanging off them, and I just assumed they were a kind of pear. But I just remembered something we saw in the market. So Danny opened it up. And they're actually walnuts. They're walnut trees all over the place. It's inside there, if you crack that, that's a walnut. I had no idea. 50 quid in the Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea walnuts came in soft green casing like this. I've learned something new today. So we've walked through mm. Utocheni village. Had our compote. We've enjoyed that. And now... Um, we're going to walk along to the next village, which is called Tribujeni. So we think there are some old ruins down here. We know there are some old ruins, but we're not sure if it's down here or somewhere else, but we're going to try this one, see if we find them. The guy you can see there, he's just come from up here, so he's actually been in those caves. We're now on the other side of the water, so we can't do it. That's pretty cool. We didn't realise. Big. There's a big pile of rocks over there. We're not sure whether that's part of the ruins or if it's an old landslide or something. But up there in the rock face, it's definitely something that's been built. And then down there, I don't know how well you can see actually on the camera, but there's like a tiny little, I guess it's a church or a chapel, where it's halfway underground. It's made out of little bricks and then it's covered with grass with a little wooden cross at the front. We have followed the sandy path all the way back to the main road here and we've come across some ruins, finally. They're actually not the ruins that we thought we were looking for. We knew about these ones as well. Um, we're just trying to find a way down and I can show you. And then there's also a little bridge. There, there's the steps, yeah. There's the steps. 
Um, there's also a little bridge there. We can cross over to the other side and maybe try and get onto those rocks a bit. Let's go down to the ruins first. We've come to the ruins here and these are the ruined public baths that were also uh, built by the Tata Mongols, the same Golden Horde people who hid their gold uh, in the caves next to the monastery now. And um, when they were here, they built loads of stuff, but a lot of it was built from wood. And when they left, they burnt a lot of it down. And so there's not a lot to show for when they were here. But this, the public baths, was all built in stone. So it survived them once they left. Right, we've had our lunch in the ruins, we've crossed the river and now, once we get down here, which is slightly terrifying, um, we're going to try and get up to those caves up there. Top now, almost. We're going to go into these caves. I'm trying to work out whether or not they were part of the same oh that's steep the same caves as the monastery but I don't don't think it is it's a bit further away this looks like it's been properly constructed so yeah we've got no idea about those caves what they are, what they're for but up here, and there's loads of them going all the way down for ages we've got a really gorgeous view as well that's the little town we're going to next. It looks like it's got a beautiful white and blue church and all across here. It is weird. <laughs> like a UFO landed. Oh wow. Yeah, and I didn't read anything about this. I've got no idea what this is. It is like a UFO landing pad. <laughs> So, it's half one, our bus back is three o'clock, we're just walking into the town now, we're hoping to maybe go, it's not going to be a big town, so we think we can go and see the church in the town, hopefully grab a drink as well because I'm really thirsty, um, then yeah, make our way back to Kishnev. I think this is an old Soviet bus stop. It's still got all the, um, the mosaic in it, well, most of it anyway. Yeah, wait for the 77 to come. I wonder if they still use it. Probably, yeah. I don't see why they, yeah, why they shouldn't. This side is covered as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can see what's left of that. <laughs> yeah, it's nice as bus stops go, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely better than the bus stops in South London. Oh. Here we go, we found the church. Oh, Danny found the church. I think it looks a bit bigger and grander from the, um, from the hill. So it's locked, so we're not going to go inside. But this is it. We found the church. I okay. wonder if the priest's family live there. I don't know if... Um, can Orthodox priests get married? I don't imagine they can, actually. Wow. So, this is the bus stop while we're waiting for our mashutka back to Kishna. It's a really nice little day out to here, to the monastery, walking around the monastery, walking around the countryside, um, seeing the caves, and then coming here as well. The villages are both really, really small, but um, they're really nice to walk around, get a taste a little bit of what it's like rurally in Moldova. The original little town we've got dropped off in as well, it has a couple of restaurants, even a couple of guest houses as well, so I guess people do stay over here and have a couple of days out in the country. 
living quietly. One of them even has a little ethnography museum, which we didn't go to, we just wanted to be outside today and look around. So all in all, it's a really nice day trip out of the city. I really enjoyed it. Would you? Da. Da. Tomorrow we're going to somewhere very interesting. I'm not going to tell you where it is though, so you'll have to come and join us next time. See you there. Bye.